Hello guys, welcome back to episode 6 of Let's Play Dark Souls with me, Crudeless. Hi, we are back and oh, joining a weaponless Anora in Dark Souls. Whew. Last episode we went into the the Darkwood Gardens beyond the wall, locked by the crest of Artorius. And we joined the, the covenant of the... Uh, I guess we, we're not in a covenant right now, but we joined the covenant... Uh, of the forest guards and um, we betrayed them by kicking a ninja off a cliff. We got invaded uh, also and we were killed by an invader and we got killed by some some trees but actually we got the Darkwood Grain Ring and we also got a Divine Ember which even the great uh, Andre of Asora can't use so uh, that's what we did in the last one. In this one we'll be going to the bell tower. Yeah you didn't expect that did you? Huh? First, want to take care of these little easy mobs right here. As you can see, our weapons is really, really good now. Uh, we can see some some ghosts of future past running around. We got some hollow armor there as well. But yeah, uh, we've actually almost been up at the boss here. Uh, there, we just have to pass through this boulder knight and not die on the way. I guess uh, almost, almost died there. That was would be pretty dumb. Since this is like one of the easiest areas in the game and we are super super strong right now uh we could just run through this place to be honest but yeah let's just make sure these guys die because yeah it's easy to underestimate these these little hollow enemies right here because they have this like psycho move uh these are pretty 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 similar to the uh the enemies uh, we find the dreglings in the boletaria palace early on in demon souls so you remember my hassle with those guys? Yeah, if you don't, go watch the- Oh! Go, go, oh, luckily we have the- Oh, <laughs> almost got trapped there. Come on, ninja. Ninja spin. Uh, <laughs> almost got trapped there. Uh, remember my, my disdain with these, these enemies, especially the, the fire-wielding, uh, oh, got some, some laggy there, uh, with the fire-wielding poles ones. Look at all these ragdolls. Ragadoll! Oh, <laughs> almost threw, threw them out the window. Let's see if we can- Hyah! I guess not. Oh uh, well. Close enough. Let's make sure we have full health, by the way. If you were human now, uh, we could go down and talk to Lotrek down in the Farling Shrine. Remember the uh, 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 the Karim, I uh, guess he's uh, Lotrek of Karim. The guy we rescued just up here in episode, uh, I guess it was episode 4. And as you can hear, the bells are ringing. That's actually some other player who has rung the first bell of awakening. So yeah, let's go through the door but before we do we want to actually use one of the items we got in the forest we want to use a gold pine resin this will increase the damage we do against the gargoyles this boss is actually one of the first ones that actually give people trouble the other one is capra demon and uh, this boss let's get the cutscene first So yeah, this is the gargoyle boss fight, and this guy is infamous for being really hard. But with our current setup, we can three-shot these guys. Uh, by the way, uh, when you do a certain amount of damage to these... Almost fell off the ledge there, that would be terrible. Uh, but once you do a certain amount of damage to this guy, um, he'll spawn his brother, basically. And uh, yeah, gotta make this a little exciting, right? So he'll spawn his brother and make sure you kill one of them really quickly so you don't have to fight two of them at the same time. But since we have the gold pied resin and a super strong weapon, this fight is basically a joke. You can also get help from uh, Lotrek and another NPC which we haven't really talked to yet. So uh, the bell tower is up here. Uh, maybe we should ring the bell. Uh, I think we should for a reason I'm going to show you eventually. So uh, let's go climb the tower. <sighs> The hardest part of Dark Souls is the climbing. The climbing part. Well, well, it's definitely not, but oh well. 
look at the view here, by the way. The the, the sun shining through there and up there. Ooh, you thought the uh, Undead Burg was a big place. And as you can see, the little tower up there. That's a place of significance. And that is actually the place we're going. That huge castle in the sky. Let's pull the, the lever. And as you can see, we saw a great overview of the, the castle over there, uh, which uh, we met uh, Sigmaia of uh, Kater... Let's get the, the text away. Uh, Sigmaia of Katarina uh, over there. Uh, why can't I slide down the ladder? Oh, yeah, I guess that's different in this game than Dark Souls 2. Uh, oh well. Uh, but the reason I actually did this right now... We could have done this a lot earlier, but I wanted to wait because I... Wanted to show you uh, some. I just hold the B button in this game. I always forget. I wanted to talk to this guy, to be honest. This guy here. Greetings. I am Oswald of Harim, the Paul. No appearance to love this. Yet magnanimous are the gods. Cometh out to confess or to accuse. For indeed all sins might. So since we sinned against, uh, let's get, learn the, well, that's it, gesture, um, okay. Uh, so I guess, uh, since we, uh, I actually, you know, betrayed my covenant, I don't want to go around being a sinner. So I wanted to show you guys this, uh, because I thought that would be, like, uh, uh, I guess, uh, sequential to the, s the story I'm trying to tell here. So we could abandon covenants with this guy, or we can request absolution. And it requires 1100 souls, which was uh, perfect. <laughs> I, I timed that really, really well. So... He can basically purge us from all sins. So if you go back to the to the dark uh, dark root dark dark root valley, uh, the uh, the gardens, uh, we'll actually uh, still be hostile to the enemies, but we can talk to Alvina again and join the covenant once more. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, there is such a thing about the uh, the fact that we kicked the the ninja off the ledge. If we actually killed him instead of kicking him over the ledge, uh, the Shiva of the East will actually. Go to Blight Town, which we're going to later, and he will be a vendor there. But unfortunately, in our situation, he won't be there. This guy also sells some purging stones, an ash-colored stone encasing a skull, secret treasure of Arsor, the Earl of Karim. So, by the way, this guy is from Karim. Uh, Lotrek is also from Karim, I guess. Um, Reduce curse buildup and breaks curse. Humans are helpless against curses and can only redirect their influence. The purging stones, uh, spurging stone does not dispel curse but receives them as a surrogate. The stone itself was once a person or some other being. Uh, so yeah, you can purchase these if you are afraid of being cursed and we will be uh, in danger of being cursed later on but not just yet. So they are fairly expensive uh, right now. There are other ways to get rid of curse. One is uh, going to place in New Londo, which we have already been to in episode 2. There's also indictments, which you can uh, basically indict uh, a player who invades you, and uh, he'll be indicted, and he can be uh, he can see the wrath of the blades of the dark moon. So yeah, the dark moon blades will kill him. You get homeward bone book of the guilty. This one is nice. Uh, the goddess uh, of sin, Velka, oversees this list of the guilty who have disrespected the gods or their covenants and shall one day face the wrath of the blades of the dark moon. Uh, the Dark Moon is a covenant uh, which you can join and act as sort of uh, sort of a police, I guess. Uh, he also says karmic justice. For each sin there is a punishment and the, uh, it is the task of goddess Velka to define the sin and mete out the punishment. Uh, also Velka's talisman, medium for casting miracles of the gods. This black tuft of hair that serves as a talisman belongs to Velka, goddess of sin. So uh, he also sells some rings here. Also the ring of sacrifice and poison bite, I guess, and blood bite. These are... Uh, the poison bite is actually pretty useful, but they are so expensive at this state of the game, so... Yeah. Uh, so Velka is one of the no, more important... Uh, it's only human, huh? Uh, but Velka is one of the uh, more important characters with regards to the gods, uh, because we don't actually see Velka, or maybe we do. There are lots of theories about, uh, about her. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, the sunlight is pretty amazing. And we have been absolved for all the deeds we have done wrong. Pretty, pretty nice. So we can B 
be a little more lighthearted, I guess. Uh, but if you remember the uh, Lotrek back in his cage, if you actually defeat the gargoyles and ring the bell, he'll uh, venture down into uh, to the Firelink Shrine. Uh, let's go down to the Firelink Shrine and take a uh, take a look at how he's doing, basically, and see how things have developed down there. Uh, I don't think there has been much much change there, to be honest. Um, but I think there is something we want to do over there as well. I I have to believe that least. Um, ooh, uh, there is something I want to do. I, th mm, I'm considering doing it right now. I think I'm actually going to do that right now. Uh, okay, uh, had a spontaneous idea there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, let's go to ooh, another player ring the bell there. Uh, let's just go to the Firelink Shrine and make sure we rest at the bonfire. Even though it's not fully kindled, uh, we can still rest here. With satisfaction, let's talk to the Crestfall. Why, what a surprise. I didn't expect you to make it. Oh, somebody rang the bell. Wait, was it you? You never give up, do you? I don't know how you do it. Well, don't stop now. Only one more. But it's going to be suicide. <laughs> I've already done a lot of suicide in this playthrough, to be honest. So. What's wrong? Get a bit of a scare out there. No problem. Have a seat and get comfortable. We'll both be hollow before you know it. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I've already decided. I don't really care. I'm simply crestfallen. Hmm? What now? I'm not up for ch- so he's done with his dialogue right now, but down here we meet a, our good friend and not evil person at all. Ah, hello there. Hello, oh, friend. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Please accept it. Got a sunlight medal. Those are pretty interesting. I'll talk more about those later. I am grateful to you for freeing me. <laughs> not enough for you. Well. Let's not be greedy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um... By the Lord, your face. <laughs> your humanity is really slipping, but there are methods. Most fools have more humanity than they know what to do with. Now, who do you imagine will make the best use of it? Mm hmm? So he wants uh, more humanities to feed himself because he believes he he is more of a worth it than I guess the other undead. Hmm. You again? What is it? Our futures are murky. Let's not be too friendly now. So he's not really a friendly guy, and he is sitting right across from this person right here. Ooh, yeah. Uh, not foreshadowing anything at all. Additionally, there are some uh, one more change to the Firelink Shrine, which we'll see once we go over to this little water area here. You can hear some snoring. So yeah, there's something sleeping down there. And we'll see what that is when we ring the other bell. Uh, by the way, we haven't. Uh, I forgot to do this once we before we did or after we did the uh, the graveyard run, I guess. So there are some stuff we can do uh, down here now, and we can also kill these guys, by the way, uh, because these they aren't really that strong anymore because we have an impressive array of uh, weaponry and skill. Uh, yeah, let's just wait for them to spawn and then do the running attack and see how much that gives us. Like, and time it well, I guess. Not like I did now. Yeah, there we go. That did a lot of damage. There we got another Estus Flask back, which is nice because people... Oh, another one! People always, uh, like, um, kindle the flame down in uh, down in the, uh, the Firelink Shrine. So we get the Catechus Round Shield. Oh, or the Caduceus. I guess it's Catechus. I at least think it is. Uh, that's there. Uh, I don't really think I'm going to bother by killing all of these guys, to be honest. They're really not worth it. Uh, 
There are some other great items here, and there we have the big guy. We get the Swipe Hunter. Now that's a two-handed sword, if you can tell by the fact that it is actually two-hander in, in in German. Uh, those are pretty cool. Oh, oh, this guy hits for a lot of damage. I did not realize he was that strong, but oh well. Uh, that's the big skeleton, guys. We will be seeing more of those guys down in the, uh, I guess, the place after the catacombs. And here's the winged spear. The winged spear is a super useful weapon and uh, is a weapon of choice for many in in Demon Souls. Um, so if you want to go with a spear root, that's an early great item to get. There is one more item up here that we haven't gotten actually, and it's across a uh, little little pathway on the other side here. So be careful not to fall down, by the way. You might take some damage. And this snoring is really, really loud. You better get some of those, uh, like, pinches that you can put in your nose, mate. So you don't have to yeah, wake your, your, your slumbering wife. Yeah, so we, we can't level up yet, but we should rest here regardless, because we are going on a journey. And this journey is one of the coolest in the game, I think. Did we get this item? I We never got this firebomb here. That's firebombs are cool because you can throw them uh, at explosive barrels and stuff like that and create like, chain reactions, which is really useful. So next off, we actually want to go up to uh, past the, uh, the, the Thorland guy. We would go up to the elevator. And to do this, you actually have to, to have the elevator unlocked, so you can do this immediately after going through the Valley of Drakes and then going back here. Um, so that's how early you can actually do this. Uh, so you can walk over here, and there's actually a place for you to, to walk. And up here, you'll be able to uh, roll across over to this little ledge. Oh, I did it. I always have trouble with that the little roll. Don't try to jump, just roll down there, regardless of if you have the, the grain ring or not. So. Uh, here we can either go up the stairs or we can go roll down and take the item. Let's go down and take the item first. So, the Under the Silent second floor west key. But we have a, we have already been at the the, the the Under the Asylum. Key to the iron bars on the west side of the second floor of the North Undead Asylum. The Undead Asylum is a giant undead prison segmented by countless iron bars. But even if a hero found a key in Lordran to liberate this prison, would he have the means or the heart to ever come back? So yeah, apparently there is a way to go back to uh, the Undead Prison or the, <laughs> the Northern Asylum. And this is going to bring us back to episode one. So if you, oh, let's <laughs> jump down. So if you don't remember this, guys, uh, there was a part in episode uh, one before we got to uh, Asora, uh, or the, the knight from Asora, who was dying and giving us the essence flask. I showed you an item to the left of uh, uh, of like the, the the courtyard area there, and uh, where we get with the bonfire. And right there, uh, the item uh, is pretty pretty cool to get. So. Uh, the bird still is, is still down there, uh, so we go up to its nest here and curl up like a ball. This is pretty similar to the thing we did in the coffin. This is a uh, like a, it was hidden to a lot of people during the early days, but eventually everybody found out about this, and it was quite common to do this uh, for everyone. But if you're if you stay here for about I guess thirty seconds or l a bit less than a minute, then eventually uh, the bird will come for us. <laughs> Look at our face there, look terrified with the mask on. Yeah, we are back at the Undead Asylum. Ooh, and as you can see, there are some new enemies here. These guys are really, really annoying. Uh, since I have the Pyromancy Flame, I might be able to uh, get rid of these guys uh, without really, yeah, taking too much damage. Luckily, because these guys go a bonanza on your face if they get the opportunity to. So let's not give them that. Let's throw this stuff at them. Not. Touch the walls with our fire. There we go. Amazing. Uh, by the way, uh, where where is it? Over here is the 
the crows, the harpies. Uh, we can drop some items there, actually. Uh, I wonder what items we actually got. I will do uh, this later when I got all the items I want and just drop them there for and show you what loot we're supposed to get. Okay, uh, this area here. You can either run straight across this little area there, but there will be a trap, so I recommend actually either going down there to the to the right or going through the courtyard. Um, currently, let's check out the courtyard first, okay? Uh, so... So in here, uh, you can either go down into the place we were previously, uh, or you can go down to the left. So, uh, let's take care of this guy, not die. Let's rest at the bonfire, by the way. Uh, good advice here is to kindle this fire, to be honest, if you're uh, really not certain about uh, your, your skill. Uh, but since we have 50 Nessus flasks, it should be enough. But uh, yeah, uh, recommend kindling that one if you are not certain. So. Um, if you go down here, mm, well, let's not. Let's go down to uh, to the other path, uh, to to the left here. You can choose either one you want, uh, basically. Just try to try to avoid the the middle there, okay? Just trust me, trust me on that one. And you can rest here as well if you want to. And this place is actually I went here pretty early on in the <laughs> in the previous playthrough I did. I went here immediately, as you can see there is. The same layout, but there is actually a white knight up there. And we've fought one of these guys before, and these white knights are actually uh, knights of Gwyn. Uh, but they're not really his knights, they are actually uh, uh, living suits of living armor. Uh, but they're still somehow alive and doing uh, Gwyn's bidding. So uh, let's take care of this guy. These, these power emotions are fairly simple to actually take care of on these guys. So. Uh, he doesn't really pose that much of a threat, to be honest, uh, but yeah. He does a lot of damage if you get hit by them, though, but yeah. Uh, he has the chance to drop uh, one of his, uh, his uh, I guess, his sword, and... Uh, well, that guy is a Silver Knight, so he has a chance to drop um, his shield, I guess, but... And as you can see, look who is gonna hollow. Andre of Astora, uh, or uh, the Knight of Astora, sorry, uh, is up and walking around like a hollow. By the way, the trap... It's still back, so you could use that to damage damage him if you want to. But yeah, you have to do a little mercy killing on this guy uh, because he is not too happy about... Uh, let's take him outside because I don't want to fight him in here. Uh, but yeah, he has gone hollow. He's basically not really in a good mood right now, so... Uh, we have to, to mercy kill him so he doesn't suffer any longer with his in his madness. Let's just throw some fireballs at him. That's one way, or we can go backstab. And there we go. So, that's... Oh, I guess he still has some health left. This guy reminds me of uh, Strava back in Dark Demon Souls, but when you loot him, you get the Crest Shield. The Crest Shield really fits uh, the, the suit of uh, the... Uh, I guess the style of the uh, Elite Knight set. Uh, it's a shield of a nameless knight, likely a high-ranked knight of Asora. One of the ancient enchanted blue shields, the crest shield greatly reduces magic damage. So as you can see, it reduces 100% physical damage, 80% of magic damage, and it has 55 stability. Making it a pretty, pretty amazing, amazing shield. You can use it if you have 10 strength, so we are able to use it actually. So we might use this if we are in need of magic defense. But yes! Still, this item up here, that's what we're gonna get. So, let's go get it! Yeah, let's go get it. Let's go get it to the top. Go break it, break it, break it. This door is open now, by the way. It was locked previously, so we just, you, you can't just walk up here um, when you arrive at the at the asylum. Oh, forget I... Yeah. Uh, so, you can't just go up there once you reach the asylum, by the way. Uh, this, the guys here are about the same. They are only the thing they, uh, that's different is that they deal uh, a little bit more damage uh, this time around. So, and there's uh, an additional enemy uh, in the area uh, inside here. Uh, there was uh, th remember the one knight that was here. Uh, this time there is oh that was terrible. Uh, remember the last time there was this knight here that was uh, this guy. And now he has a friend with a spear, uh, which is jo joining him, helping him out, and uh, making sure everything is cozy. So, you know, get, get out of here. 
Get out. And yeah, that's where we use the key to get into the west wing. And all we do this for is simply to get this little item. However, this is the rusted iron ring. Doesn't seem that important, right? But it's in fact, it improves balance on poor footing, meaning the iron ring was used to shackle the guilty. It is terribly rusted and faintly stained with blood. Those who find this strange ring to their liking will be pleased to find it is easier to gain footing on poor grounds such as swamps. So before going to Blighttown, this item is amazingly useful, or other areas where there is some sort of water uh, that goes up your legs. So you'll be able, you'll be able to move uh, normally through water uh, like areas with this ring on, or shallow waters, I guess. Let's see if we can level up. Yeah, let's get our dexterity up to 28. That's nice. Okay. Now, whew, let's jump into the middle and see what lies beyond. Ah, there we have him. Remember him? The first thing we actually... Oh, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> clear these out, by the way. Uh, remember the first the first thing we saw in the game, actually, was this guy, and he killed us. That was, unfortunately, I got a little bit distracted by the the additional draglings there. Uh, <laughs> maybe want to kill them before we take him on, basically. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this guy is back. And this guy isn't called the Asylum Demon. This guy's... I oh, don't lose health already, guys. Come on. Uh, this guy oh, is actually called the Stray Demon. And he is uh, one of the uh, one of the tougher bosses in the game, actually, in my opinion. He has this amazing, amazing fire attack, which is annoying as hell. Uh, so, yeah. And he one-shots me, apparently. That's not good at all! That's not good at all, but it'll make the fight a bit harder and more exciting as well. So let's try to take him on. I guess it's because we don't have any armor or vitality at all, but we should be able to take him on, right guys? We should be able to do that, but just take care of these guys first, I guess. And actually our bloodstain is up here, but we don't really have that many souls to actually save us, so let's jump down. Uh, by the way, losing the health at the beginning here, super, super, uh, super dumb of us to actually uh, lose that, but oh well. You can slice him in the back. I recommend actually, actually staying at his, at his butt, because he'll do this butt stomp, like here, and that will just do an AoE damage, and you can get back in, uh, basically. And by the way, his attacks are like, uh, they do deal like fire damage and stuff, so yeah. Just time that uh, right, and he'll be able to do dodge that move pretty, pretty significantly. So he does that once more, and just dodge backwards. Run back in, Cut his face up, and as you can see, he got the bleed damage thing there. Uh, once he does that, oh, let's start back and uh, run in once more. Ha ha! This is like a fight of uh, not attrition, but I guess uh, like agility. You you want to be as close into him as possible because you don't want him to use his his staff there, uh, because that staff uh, actually controls fire damage, uh, or it does like this huge. Oh, we got some lag there, uh, some huge fire damage spell. Uh, we don't want that to hit us. So yeah. This thing right there. Oh, that's dangerous, so just keep hitting him from behind. Oh! Don't want that to hit us, so let's get behind him. There we go. The stray demon is down. Uh, <laughs> the first attempts were, weren't really, really attempts, he just one shot us, and now we got him down, so yeah. Oh, what is this? He dropped some humanity, a titanite slab, which is nice. Um, so we can use that to upgrade weapons once they are above plus 10, I guess. That was the Stray Demon. There are some interesting, like, uh, lore about this guy. Uh, or, I guess, uh, we'll go into that later on once we go down into the Blight Town. There are some theories about these demons in the Asylum here, why they are here. Some say they are just trials for us, uh, to, for, the, for the demons, uh, or for the undead, I guess. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah. Now we are back at the uh, the first, back at the beginning, back at the place where we started the g entire game, and there's a black knight there, and he does this, uh, he's actually black, the other one was white, remember? And uh, the reason why they are different is because uh, in the intro, intro video, uh, or the introduction cinematic, we saw the Witches of Isolith, uh, and they actually attempted to uh, like replicate the first flame, and something went wrong, and... They didn't make it, and some of uh, Gwyn tried to help them out with uh, by sending in his knights, and some of them were charred by the 
by the new fire of the the Witch of Isolith. But here is the item that we want. This is the peculiar doll. And it's in the same place we started out, which is pretty interesting. So what is this item? The peculiar doll. Is it here? Yeah, here it is. A strange doll with a strange dress. There once was an abomination who had no place in this world. She clutched this doll tightly and eventually was drawn into a cold and lonely painted world. So yeah. That's what we came here for. But why was it here? And where does it lead us? And these are things we'll ponder on in the next episode, guys. I've been Crudeless. And I hope you join me in episode 7 of Let's Play Dark Souls. See you guys then.